what's up people got another quick car edition and I wanted to bring this one up because a lot of people um, kind of commented sent me a couple of um, emails a couple of uh, other little things regarding the Waffle House video that I just did regarding criminal damages you can actually go back and watch that one that'll be great for your boy but I spoke about the call and the call asserted that the young lady was in there yelling and being disruptive and things of that nature and you could hear her in the background and the case that I gave was Florida VJL 529 US 266 2000 the call itself was something to give reasonable suspicion of criminal activity the problem was the the disturbance itself arrived from her being charged for um, cutlery or silverware or whatever you know the plastic knives and forks but even with her you know being very boisterous that's not illegal so there was no criminal activity and she spoke in hypotheticals meaning if I had a gun or if I came back I could do this or if I wanted to I could do this so speaking in hypotheticals is not illegal and even if she made some sort of directive comment that made the Waffle House employees uncomfortable, those also are not criminal acts simply because of the fighting words doctrine. I've gone over a couple of cases regarding that because again, it's protected speech. We don't have to like what she was saying. We don't have to like how she was saying it, but it is still protected speech. Now, I wanted to go over a couple of cases why those things go in correlation because I think also there was a little confusion about an anonymous tip and a call-in regardless of if it's an anonymous tip or if it's a tip called in where nobody's looking at anybody and the complaint is made before the officer is there it falls under the same guidelines these guidelines apply for those calls because until there is contact by the officer with the complainant it is anonymous so Navarrete v California 134 1968 2014 case provides an anonymous chip generally cannot provide reasonable suspicion the Fourth Amendment demands police to have before conducting a traffic stop. Now, understanding that conducting a traffic stop is pretty much what is done for making contact. Because there has to be, like Florida BJL, the tip has to be reliable in its assertion of illegality and not merely the identification of someone. Now, when you have someone yelling and saying, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, it does not make it illegal activity because we know from Sure V Color, there has to be a injured party. There has to be damage to person. There has to be damage to property, which there was not, or the officer had to witness a felony, which he did not, because when he walked in, she was sitting down. Now, the reason why they must have the assertion of illegality, because when they go to make contact, according to United States v. Cortez, 449 U.S. 411-1981, the police must articulate a particularized and objective basis for suspecting the particular person stopped of criminal activity and again in order for there to be criminal activity or a crime there has to be an injured party it has to be injured via property it has to be an injury via personal damage which there was not or the officer has to witness a felony, which would generally be damage to person or property. So understanding, 
an anonymous tip cannot provide reasonable suspicion. Navarrett v. California, because of Florida v. Jail, it has to be an assertion of illegality in its call, in the call, because U.S. v. Cortez, the police must articulate a particularized objective or basis for suspecting a particular person of criminal activity. Nothing more, nothing less. There has to be something and they have to articulate, which he did not. So, again, not opinion, not theory, not even a hope, not even showing bias, which I thought was the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It is actual law. And as we've seen in the last video, they are deemed to know the law. So, on to the next one. See you next time.